a, I think it's a good move because again we have to have the emphasis in those departments but one question that I do have is if there is another fire chief uh, appointed what are we going to do with the assistant chief that we actually have over there right now because again we can't afford deputies we can't afford assistant uh, anything in the city I'll come back after my colleagues speak but those are just uh, a few thoughts that I have 60 days for a public safety plan 30 days for a code enforcement plan Can I respond now or just go around the room Question. Go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> well, there may be some of those items we can follow up with at another time. Um, <clears throat> what I can tell you is that the um, currently uh, our adjustments to the budget um, <clears throat> have impacted uh, every uh, department except for the city council, the ombudsman. And currently, uh, because we have not received any <clears throat> direction from this body, the adjustment to the clerk's office is less than 1%. So uh, in Michael Towns, in preparing that <clears throat> uh, amendment for your consideration, I'd ask by the end of the week uh, that you submit any uh, reductions in the departments that you oversee uh, to Michael Towns so we can calculate that. Uh, otherwise, the, the layoff days, the layoffs to 1,600 employees uh, affect every, <coughs> excuse me, uh, every department, uh, again, except for uh, a portion of transportation and a portion of community and economic development, which are, which are uh, grant funded. So uh, those are a couple things to, to consider. Um, as we do, we're bringing that amendment forward, so you'll see uh, the spread. Uh, certainly, uh, as the process requires, welcome your input, and you'll have the ability. Uh, my office's budget uh, will be open in that amendment. The city administrator's budget uh, will be open. We're making adjustments, and we expect that all of us will share in that sacrifice, including uh, the city council. Uh, is 60 days versus end of uh, the school year which is what I propose that's just a few weeks different uh, so we can have that to you before Memorial Day I, I don't see that being a major um, a major challenge our primary uh, need in order to present uh, something that again was going to be more than a plan that sat on the shelf which I think this community has seen a lot of over the years uh, we want a strategy that we know we have the capacity and the expertise to implement uh, and with the support from Michigan State's School of Criminal Justice, uh, we're confident that we'll be able to uh, put that together in an integrated fashion. So uh, we just recently approved the receipt of the foot patrol grant. Uh, parallel with that what was made the grant to the School of Criminal Justice. Uh, so we're now in a position where we can put together that integrated uh, public safety plan. Uh, the code enforcement uh, package, that, that was pre-discussed at the last meeting. Uh, I, I have a draft plan under my review already, uh, so the 30-day timeline for that uh, is not a problem. Again, that's another example of how we could, we could throw something down on paper and you could look at it, uh, and then conditions wouldn't get any better in the community if we didn't have <coughs> the enforcement teeth. Uh, and the proper procedures worked out. So we're committed to doing this once uh, and doing it right. Um, <clears throat> those were the, uh, sorry if I had to ask for clarification, I wasn't no, taking fire notes, chief. but fire chief, right. So um, it is under consideration to appoint uh, a fire chief. That resolution would appropriately come uh, to this body for approval. The assistant fire chief position is protected within the current <clears throat> firefighters uh, contract uh, so that is not a position that's at our discretion as to whether or not uh, we fill it or eliminate it the only way that that could be done is is through an adjustment uh, in the actual contract and we continue to stay <clears throat> at the table uh, when when I made the comment that talks had broken down uh, that had to do with the fact that uh, we weren't getting any closer uh, at that point to a settlement but on the day that the layoffs went into effect there was actually uh, a scheduled mediation session. So a number of staff, along with leaders from the Flint Patrol Officers Union, spent a couple hours together that morning. So I wouldn't want you to ever get the impression that because things are going better or worse, that for any reason the process has stopped. Uh, the process continues. Again, even on that day, 
uh, in the midst of all that we were facing after that unprecedented string of arsons and the attack on this city's safety. Uh, we had a team that was spending a couple hours together on that mediation session. Uh, we've continued to have conversations uh, to try to refine proposals uh, that we think may be more acceptable uh, to our to our unions uh, as they consider uh, what kind of concessions and, and sacrifices they're willing to make to help us through these tough times. Councilman Kincaid. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. To the, to the Chief, I'm going to separate my questions. Police Department, Fire Department. We talked about um, the fire stations are fully staffed. Could you run down the staffing of that fire station so that you know, fully staffed could mean one one idea. Fully staffed could mean another idea. I mean, I, I think I have a pretty good idea what it takes to um, fully staff a fire truck to be able to go in, fight a fire, and save somebody's life. And I, I would like to know what that staffing level that you um, are saying that they are, are at. What, what I'm saying is fully functional. I'm, what I'm saying before, we had stations where we had three firefighters at a station. They respond to a fire and couldn't do anything. Right. They had to wait for their backup to get there. So in this configuration, we tried to put together a, a station where at least when they get to a fire, they can start attacking the fire. So, you know, they may be able to put the fire out before their backup get there, but in case they weren't, if in case they're not able to put the fire out, their backup is on the way, but at least they can start fighting the fire before, you know, someone else gets there. That's where, you know, the configuration now we're trying to accomplish. So, so then at fire station number six, we have an officer, a driver, and one firefighter or two firefighters on that fire truck. On that on that fire truck, when they get to when they get to that truck, will arrive with four off four firefighters on that truck, maybe five, and they can at least start fighting the fire. So no less than four. No less than four. But potentially five. Yes. People assigned to that truck, maybe at that particular shift or day. Yes, that's, that, that's, that's correct. correct. How about overtime? Are we um, experiencing um, excessive overtime since the layoffs have occurred with the rash of fires or um, has overtime maintained at the same level as prior to before the layoffs? Well, I can't, it's too soon to tell right now because, you know, with this rash of fires, uh, and the day I've been doing other things, I haven't been able to look at the overtime. So we really don't know if we're spending a lot of, I mean, you know, I, I don't know about the fire department. I know. In waste collection, they got behind and they worked overtime on Friday and Saturday. So they laid people off on Thursday and worked and worked people over on Friday and Saturday. If we maintain that kind of uh, uh, philosophy in the city of Flint, well, we're not saving money because it costs a lot more to pay people overtime. And if in the fire department we're having firefighters injured because of the excessive number of fires, and we're having people. Uh, not being able to respond to for the um, fire station to be fully staffed, and we're having to call in people who work overtime. Um, I'm just concerned that if we're starting to see a trend since Friday, uh, Saturday, Sunday, and today, uh, that if that trend continues, that it could actually cost the city more than prior to before the layoffs if we're working excessive overtime. And I'm not saying that we are. I'm just asking to make sure 